Uh, since, 2000, uh, since 2009, uh, when uh, together with my late friend Armen Haknazarian, we looked at the uh, articles and books published by the Republic of Azerbaijan against Armenia, uh, and uh, nothing much happening in English language, particularly uh, from our own side, uh, we decided to uh, do something about it, and I, w I undertook to write the book, The Invention of History, there in the book to expose the lies and falsifications that the Azerbaijani historians and academicians today perpetrate, and they distribute their uh, uh, literature wildly through Haider Aliyev Foundation. They spend millions on them, while our scientists and specialists write in Armenian and Russian and articles and these books are prepared and printed in Armenia or in Moscow at the latest, and not accessible to the, not accessible to the Western scientists. So my books, I always write in English first, then translate it myself into Armenian, then have it officially translated by, to, into Russian. And my first book appeared in, 19, in 2004, which was the historic maps of Armenia. Then it was translated to Russian, Russian and Armenian and print, printed. Then the other book, next book, also a detailed cartographic study of maps of the countries south of the Caucasus during medieval times. This is much detailed scientific study of the maps. And uh, in all the maps, I've chosen uh, the world where Armenia is depicted or the area of Southern Caucasus where you can find Armenia. And these maps are drawn by not Armenians, not recently, but since 2,600 years ago by uh, Greco-Romans, by Islamic cartographers, by Western Latin cartographers until the modern days. In my uh, the historic books, the first one, The Invention is History, the main uh, emphasis was on historical falsifications. And when Azerbaijani authorities destroy Armenian heritage, and they claim, they blame the Armenians to, they had to have destroyed Azerbaijani heritage, where there is no Azerbaijani heritage as such, because this country was born in 1918. Before that, there was no Azerbaijan north of the Arax River. There was an Iranian province of Azerbaijan for 2,000 years, and that was a part of Iran all the time. And the population of that province were Aryans, and until the 16th century, they spoke with the Pahlavi dialect, Iranian dialect, not Turkish. When the Seljuks came, came to rule the area and later on, this grad land, uh, language gradually changed and they also both sides of the Arax River started speaking Turkish. But Azerbaijan as such, as a country, did not exist north of the Arax River until 1918. If you look at the maps of 2000 years until the years 1918, mm -hmm. all that area in the old days it was called Caucasian Albania, in, in Arabic Iran, in Armenian Arvank, uh, and later on during the Middle Ages um, it was called by various names such as Shirvan, Dagestan, Dayton, Talesh, etc., and different. Khanets, Persian Khanets existed there until 1918. In 1918, when that area became independent, uh, they chose the Musavat Party, the nationalist Musavat Party uh, leader, uh, chose the name of the neighboring Iranian republic's name, Azerbaijan, uh, Iranian province's name, Azerbaijan, as their own. This is this was a, a political decision because they wanted later on to claim that the Iranian province of Azerbaijan is theirs, which they've tried on a few occasions until 1992, where Elchi Bey claimed in the Azerbaijani Republic's parliament that this day, those are our brothers separated by us by the Russians and by the Persians. My books expose the truth, referring not only to European and Greco-Roman historians, but to historians who lived in Baku in Azerbaijan, raised there, their own historians, 
For instance, Baki Khanov, the founder of the Azerbaijani history, says that the city of Parda was occupied mainly by Armenians. When they translate this book into the modern Turkish in Azerbaijani language, uh, that last sentence is removed. Any reference to Armenians is removed. They falsify history in order to prove that they were there before Armenians. Um, I would like to ask you, first of all, to tell me a couple of examples from what thesis they promote exactly. Like, what is that they say it's this way and um, how it is this proved actually in the international literature? Just a couple of examples to make it clear. Yes. Uh, well, they, they claim that the Armenians never lived in the South Caucasus. They were brought there by the Russians in 1828. Now, there are a number of internationally known um, literature. All the travelers that traveled that area uh, since the 11th and 12th centuries until the 19th century, everybody writes about the Armenians, about the Armenians' towns and villages, other Armenian churches existing in the area. Even the Iranian travelers, even, if, uh, even Arab travelers write about the Armenians living in the area. So this is completely contradiction they, to their, uh, what they claim. Then uh, they claim that the Azerbaijan has had uh, uh, an independent government for 2,000 years. How now, how do you prove that? There is nothing north of the Arax River in old world, any map that you look drawn by anybody, including particularly Arab and Islamic cartographers. Yes. Islamic and Arab cartographers North of the Arax River, say this is country of Iran. Armenia straddles both sides of the Arax River, north and south, mm -hmm. and they give the names of the cities of the, uh, uh, Armenia. And they claim uh, that Azerbaijan and Iranian province of Azerbaijan and Iran, north of the river, and Armenia had very close economic ties together in, those, in the early ages. So there were three countries there. One was Azerbaijan, which is the Iranian province. One is Iran, which is the today's well, territory, which today is occupied by the Azerbaijan. And then Armenia. It's not only uh, Arab and Islamic uh, cartographers, also the Western cartographers and geographers mention that all the time, until 1918. And uh, it also has to do with the uh, Albanian history, right? They say that they are descendants from Albania. Yes. And uh, can you tell us a, a little bit about that? They were Christians, then they were converted into Islam. And mm -hmm. how, how do they justify all their points and how they contradict? Well, they, when, whenever it's suitable, they say that they are uh, uh, the followers of the August Turks from Central Asia. And now, on other occasions, when there is a contradiction with Armenia, they want to claim that their history is theirs. They say, we are the, uh, the heirs of the Albanian, uh, Caucasian Albanians. Now, Caucasian Albanians, as such, one, one people did not exist. There were, according to Strabo, 26 tribes in the area of Albania. And these tribes still today exist. There are a number of tribes living there. In addition to the ones exist, old ones, the new ones moved in. Uh, and the Azeris claim that their their father their, their forefathers, and their forefathers were Christians, and they they converted to Islam. Fine, but if, according to them, all the monuments in the area, all the historical monuments, all the churches were built by the Armenians by their forefathers, therefore it's their own. The Albanians converted into Islam during the ninth to tenth century latest. And there were only small population of non-Muslims living there. Our churches in the area date from the 10th to 18th, 17th century. Did the Muslim Albanians build those churches? Who did? Who built them? There's a contradiction in terms. They said these are our heritage. And they claim also that uh, in order to justify their existence in the geographical area, now they claim that the August Turks did not original, did originate in the Central Asia, but they moved to Caucasus 5,000 years ago. Not, in, not 500 years ago, but 5,000 years ago. Therefore, they were 
they were ethnically, they were the local people living in the Caucasus, which is complete lie. Everybody knows when the Turkish tribes started moving in 8th, 9th century. Is there a consensus on this in international oh, scholarly yes. community? A scholarly community, is it, it is not. Everybody knows that the Turks, first Turkish tribes that moved to the area were the 7th, 8th century, and then in, en masse they moved in during the 8th, 9th century. And until, 19, uh, until the 14th, 15th century, they were not organized as one nation. There were tribes of Turkic people from Central Asia, different tri tribes. And the Ottomans only organized themselves during the 15th century. Uh, and there are many, many examples yes, uh, written, examples yes. Right now, uh, for instance, the Azerbaijanis claim that all the Iranian scholars of the Middle Ages are actually Azerbaijani because they lived in the areas for some years. For instance, uh, Nasir Eddin Tusi, who built the old observatory in Maragai during the 12th century, they said he is Azerbaijani because he built that in Maragai, which is Azerbaijan. That was province of Azerbaijan, by the way. While Tusi means from the city of Tus, which is 1,000 kilometers east of <laughs> Azerbaijan. The name gives it away and many, many examples like that. But unfortunately, the modern scholars who, have, who know nothing about the old history and do study history, they begin to study history, have, are presented with multitude of books yes. that are written in this manner. And therefore, gradually they come to accept the reality as the falsehood presented to them. Even a number of uh, scholars uh, fall into the trap and they present Azeris as ethnic people living in the area since the Middle Ages. As I understand, there are, the, the international community should not accept it because they know that all these versions are false. Yeah. So how do they manage to get their books and their ideas into the international level and penetrate into the scholarly community? Well, uh, it's easy if you, if you easy if you have lots of money to spend. Okay. First of all, they appoint writers who should write a history. For instance, Mr. Aliyev himself, the President Aliyev himself in 2005 claimed in the parliament said whoever, which scholar that writes book proving that Armenians were, did not live in beer here in this area, they are not indigenous peoples, I will reward them. And last two years ago he announced that I thank for all the scientists for having producing those books uh, which are for in, uh, following my instructions. Now, these books are written to order, paid and written to order. They are printed in glossy format in various languages, English, French, German, and even um, Arabic and uh, Pashto sometimes, a few of the books. And they are freely distributed to all political think tanks, libraries, municipalities, etc., all over the world. Now, uh, we don't have such organizations. Armenians have been lacking behind into this sort of a thing for many, many years, uh, saying that, the, okay, the international uh, scholars know that this is not true. Fine, they do. All the scholars, all the specialists know that what, what the truth is. But the student who studies history and geography, cartography, they don't know, they want to learn. So they pick on these books and gradually come to accept as being the reality. Now see, we Armenians have kept our history uh, even through this few hundred years that we didn't have any kingdom or any country, independent country of our own. And we kept our history. Now that we have an independent country, our neighbor is threatening to eliminate our history. And the reason for this, for Azerbaijan, we go back to communism when the country became independent Republic of Azerbaijan, according to Stalin's decree, all republics should have individual history, individual culture, independent culture and history. Now, if you are a country that did not have a country to your name, now there's a new name, a new country, how do you go about it? You have to 
appropriate the history and the culture existing in the area, then therefore this is what they've been doing. Uh, un but the country was called Republic of Azerbaijan in 1918 and 20. However, the people themselves, until 1936, the people, the population of that country called themselves Turks and Tatars. And it was, it needed another decree from Stalin to change the name into Azerbaijani. And uh, what about the language? They do not have a uh, language of their own. Yes, well, uh, the Turkish language was brought from the Central Asia and it was imposed on the local population. However, the first written text in the Turkish language appeared in the, due towards the end of the 19th century. They say we are a country that has 2,000 years of independent history and government. How come we don't have a right written language? And the written language is a very, very good tool in their hands to change history. Whatever was written in the past, it was in Persian. Now they have to re-translate and transliterate those texts into the modern Turkish language, which is Azerbaijani language, which in 19... Uh, until 1929 was the Arabic characters, 1929 it converted into the Latin. In 1939 converted to Russian, Cyrillic, and again 1990s back to Latin. Now, the people today do read the Azerbaijani history, they read the Latin characters. They don't know what is it written in Farsi, in the Persian language. Years ago, for three, four years ago, I had a lecture on this, a uh, talk on this in the European Parliament. There were five Azeri scholars and uh, diplomats, young diplomats present there. And at the end, uh, one of them raised hands and said that you're saying that all the Azerbaijani historians are falsifying the facts and we are saying that you are falsifying the facts. I said, let's not believe to either, either of them either nor me nor to your, your uh, historians and scientists. Does anybody read Persian among you? One of them said, my mother is Iranian. I said, okay, go to the Academy of Sciences, get these two historic books, which are in Farsi, and then have the modern ones that you study today and compare them. Ask your mother to read and translate it and see what is written there. Then you will see who's the liar. Yes. Uh a little bit about the techniques, how exactly they do it. One of them is, uh, you mentioned in your book, that they translate the changing, oh, yes. yeah. uh, omitting words, changing structures, and uh, omitting whatever they don't want to be there. Yes, well, uh, while you're transliterating even from your own language into one character to the other, for instance, the uh, history of Karabakh was translated, written by uh, Mirza Garabaghi in 1840s. This was translated into little Russian characters into the Turkish in 1959, which was a correct translation, full translation. However, later on in 1986, it was revised and any name related to Armenian was removed from it. Simply removed. Simply removed because nobody reads the Russian characters anymore. This is Latin characters now. Nobody, so it, they were removed. The sentences were removed. The names were removed, all sorts of things. Uh, Armenian historians, Kagankat Vatsi, has become Kagankatli, Turkish historian, Azerbaijani historian. And his uh, uh, army that he gathered, uh, 10,000 people to, to free Armenia at the time, they've changed it to Albania. He was Albanian. He wanted to free Albania, not Armenia. So, so all sorts of falsification. Armenia is changed, Albania or deleted completely. In Baki Khanov books, the Golestani Eram, it is called, it is transliterated into Turkey, Turkish, mm -hmm. and any name of Armenian is removed. And Armenia is replaced by our, 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 uh, Albania mainly. So they, are, they change and contradict and falsify their own... Oh yes, their own historians' accounts. Uh, That's no shame in there. Everything is moved. They even... Uh, have learned from the uh, Turkish yeah. uh, school books, where in Turkey, for instance, fifth grade school books say that the Turkic, the original Turkic people 
were from Central Asia who came to uh, Mesopotamia, south of the Caucasus, 10,000 years ago and taught that local population how to cultivate land, how to raise animals, domestic animals, and later built civilization centers in Greece and in Mesopotamia. They claim that the Turkic people have done that. They don't say that the Turkic people came during the 7th, 8th, uh, eighth centuries. They were nomads, they were just far, uh, sheep, uh, had herds of sheep. But this is falsification that is proved, written in the school books, and all the school children are taught that, and of course naturally believe it. Take uh, the pop people, people of Armenia during the uh, communist regime. During communist time, the independent Republic of Armenia, 1918-1920, was deemed as a capitalistic state, and they're, they're not Armenians, they're all th uh, traitors to the, of the country. Now, after independence, it was realized that was not true. This was uh, the wrong history that was taught during those years. And now we're reverting back to the true history. This will happen in Azerbaijan. When? I don't know, but it will happen. I wonder if there are any authentic, um, true or real translations of those old uh, sources writing about Azerbaijan history that they translated falsely. But are there uh, real... The original ones do exist. Or or oh yes, yes. Most of those books have been translated into English. Yes, Most of them. And the Persian trans writings have been printed in Iran. Mm -hmm. The original texts in Farsi has been printed in Iran. Are, are they less in they're, the they're available here. They're available here. Most of them are. But any new book that is written against with falsified basis of falsified history yeah. uh, is not. Uh, uh, there are so many of them yes. that these are uh, simply overwhelm the number of the previous books. Yeah, but I mean, if someone wants to actually, if someone knows only English to check the veracity of the compared. There, there are many, many Iranian authors, many European authors have translated those books into uh, English and into other European languages. They're all, everything is available. Old books, old uh, history books are available in uh, various languages, because yes. I, I remember Professor Brunotian, who is also yeah. studying yes. these things, he said that uh, the number of books that are now uh, being published in this falsified version are so many in number that they can be compared in number with those. That's what I said, they're overwhelmed, they overwhelm. George is one of the few people that has written extensively against these falsifications. He, ex he has exposed many facts that how the names have changed, how the truth has been changed, he even has published articles on yes, those. Yes. Yeah. And Yes, in the school books, for instance, uh, in the school history books, for instance, Armenians are called the those in black who occupy us, our, our countries, and destroy our peoples. This is what they call the Armenians. The Armenians are branded as killers of the Azerbaijanis. Uh, if you ask the schoolboy now who the Armenians are, they will say our enemies who want to kill us and eliminate our nation from the earth. Okay. This is in the school books. Yeah. We know that at the same time, while Aliyev is claiming that Armenia has occupied their lands, uh, at the same time, same time they are claiming that the monuments in the Armenian territory, in the, in the present Republic of Armenia, like, I don't know, Dantev, Holvirab, and all the ones that we know are ours, uh, they claim that there are inscriptions on these uh, churches that prove that, prove that they are Turkish. Uh, uh, what can you say about this? Oh, yes, it's certainly. They have, uh, <clears throat> they have produced books. Uh, for instance, there's a books, uh, book called the uh, monuments of the Western Azerbaijan. And the, on the map, on the first page, there's a map of Armenia underneath the, this is the Western Azerbaijan, uh, the birthplace of the August Turks. Yes. Yes. And all the Armenian monuments, all the even Urartian monument, monuments before Christianity, mm -hmm. they are called Turkish Armenia. For instance, Tatev is called a Turkish church. How do they do this? 
Yes, well, it's uh, yeah, they're just make it up. I've got the, I have a samples of that in my book, a couple yeah. of samples, a few samples of that. Everything is Turkish. There is one thing. There's only the uh, in is says Turco Armenian yeah. Church. Uh, what is Turco Armenian Church? I do not know. And they're Turkey, Turkish Christian Turks. Where did they come from during the sixth to eighteenth century? I do not know. But they published books. But unfortunately, the, the book, the author of the book is somebody called something Alec Barley, uh, academician. It doesn't exist. Yeah. It's a false name. It's a wrong name. A number of academicians are listed in the book. Yeah. Again, they don't, they don't exist. I've checked with the academy. They don't exist. Yeah. They're just false names. And the MOOC has printed by the Ministry of yeah. Tourism and f of Azerbaijan. Not in, the ministry has yeah, published the book. No. So they are scholars and they are considered, oh, yes. they are considered academicians and they uh, actually completely violate the academic uh, rules. To... I, I'll give you a small example. There's a small book uh, about the history of Albanian, uh, Alba Azerbaijan and Albania, uh, written by uh, Mamedova during the 80s, yeah. 1980s. In the book uh, it says, We've taken extensive references from Albanian literature, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. Fine. Then there's a 400 titles of literature references. Out of 400, about 170 are Armenian. Mm -hmm. About 100 are uh, Russian, which are Soviet Russian. Okay. So there are about uh, 10, 15 Azeri and a few Persian, not one Albanian source, because it doesn't exist. Okay. However, in the preface, it says, based mainly on Albanian sources, we have produced these maps. And again, they have changed the, whatever they were well, doing. Of course, they want uh, they Albania and Azerbaijan occupy the Iranian territories from city of Ghazvin, which is 140 kilometers from Tehran, and Hamadan, which is about 300 kilometers from this Araxis, to Dagestan, including Armenia. On, in all those maps, there's all Azerbaijan, not one single name of Armenia. Okay, so they, uh, as the president has recently also claimed, uh, President Ali, the present day Armenia is uh, historical homeland of Azerbaijan. This built, the Armenia has been built on historic lands of uh, Azerbaijan, they claim. Mm -hmm. A country which doesn't, didn't exist, how could you ex build your country okay. on their lands? And they also have claims on uh, Iran. What, do, oh, yeah, what of course. the Iranians do? The Iranians, uh, the Iranian government is very, very cautious about this and they encourage the, any real truth to come out. Both my books have been translated into a Farsi language and they will be printed soon. Are, are they working uh, in these terms better than, the, than us? Uh, internally, there are lots of articles, lots of things written about that. But the problem is that to teach to inform the local Azerbaijani, Iranian Azerbaijani population that you are a different race of people. Your language was uh, other language until the 15th, 16th century. Iranian scholars have written many books on this. And uh, one of them, called Kasravi, even says that the reason that the Seljuks managed to change the language was because the language, the language of the local people was not written language, it was oral language. Mm -hmm. And the same area lived many Armenians. The Armenians kept their language, they didn't change into Turkish because they had a written language. Okay. They have writing, yes. they kept it. This is Iranian hist uh, linguist that says that, Kasravi. Um, you, you mentioned about the uh, reasons of all this um, saying that it uh, started from the uh, con from the Soviet Union. Yeah, yeah, of course. But uh, uh, another question, the big question is why, and uh, the Soviet Union is only a part of the answer, I believe. Uh, why are they? Why I, are they trying to prove all these things now? Uh, is it because they want actually to come and occupy Armenia, or what goal is it that they're accomplishing? Um, the, the, it's a, a simple political goal. During the Soviet era, they had to obey what the decisions of the Communist Party was. In other words, invent a new country, 
invent history and invent culture for their own. Yeah. During the Soviet Union, when Soviet Union, um, the Russian, the communist occupied Azerbaijan in 1920, the name Azerbaijan, they could have changed to its original name, Shirwan or something, but they kept it because they wanted to use it against Iran as a political phrase, which they did in 1947, trying to con connect the Iranian Azerbaijan to the Republic, the Soviet Republic of Azerbaijan. They didn't succeed there. But this, this is a power game with the elite, with the ruling elite, and they have continued since independence, since the petrodollars arrived there, with much, much force, much uh, zeal and much force. They do it because it's their existence per se as Azerbaijanis is threatened if they say we are a conglomeration of different people. The United States of America consists of many, many nations and they're proud of their own heritages, each one of them. Azerbaijanis consist of many races, many tribes, but they're not proud of the individual history of each tribe or culture of each tribe. They said, no, these all belong to one tribe, one country, one people, Azerbaijani, which both are false. Azerbaijani people as such, they are not unique people, un un unique uh, uh, nation. It's a conglomeration of various people. Can we draw parallels with pan-Turkism? Uh, well, pan-Turkism uh, is uh, rampant there and the Turk pan-Turkists try to utilize this Azerbaijani politics to their own use as well. And there are not many pan-Turkists in Azerbaijan as well that they want to unite with the uh, pan-Turkists. It suits the pan-Turkists' purpose as well to have a strong Azerbaijan there in order to complete the dream of the pan-Turkists to have a Turkish-speaking nations from uh, Asia Minor through Caucasus to Central Asia. Uh, it, Armenia is a big thorn in the middle there in the, on their back. So it serves, serves them as well. Uh, Turkish Azerbaijani writers, one of them has written, historians have written a book that, uh, about Turks and Azeris being one nation divided into two countries. It's, it has not, there's no relevance to it. Yeah. yeah, they say the same thing. Saying politicians, whatever politicians say, you have to take them, as they say, with a pinch of salt because most politicians, most things that politicians say are for a purpose and they're normally not true, distorted truths. Okay, uh, we know that there are um, a lot of sources saying what the reality is, but uh, how many scholars actually deal with the falsification of Azeris? Uh, because there are scholars who write about Armenian history and everything, Yes. But how many are there who expose the actual lies that Azerbaijan is spreading? I know you, I know the, uh, Dr. Burnutian and uh, Schneerman, Victor Schneerman has yes. dealt with that. But I don't know too many names. Uh, well, uh, one of the uh, people that deals with the matter all the time is George Burnutian. Yeah. He is the only one in diaspora has written extensively on this. Uh, in Armenia, there are lots of others, younger uh, historians, and that are gradually starting to do that. There are a number of small, small volume books and coming uh, coming out in this. Uh, I think uh, I don't want to boast, but uh, my original book in 2009 has served to some to some purpose to incite the younger generation, the other historians, also to write about this. Yeah. And there's a movement, there are written, writing articles, and they are also publishing in various languages, not just Armenian and Russian, also in English. Yeah, so this is the most important one, and my message to all, all our friends, our colleagues here is to write by all means in Armenian or Russian, but do translate it to English, because this is the international language, and the internet takes English very seriously. Are there any international scholars, non-Armenian scholars? Uh, there are non-Armenian scholars, such as the one you mentioned, Shnir Alman, and uh, others, uh, Zakharov in, uh, in Mos Moscow, and uh, Areshev yeah. in Moscow. There are a number of others, and, uh, but they 
they are prey to the Azeri propaganda. The Azerbaijanis offer them money all the time uh, and large sums of money not to write in anything against them but to write against the Armenians. This I know from the mouth of the people who have been offered these bribes. Uh, I don't want to disclose any names, but they are, they are doing it. Wolfgang, uh, there's a uh, German scholar who's done this. And uh, he's wrote, written a book of the Azerbaijani conflict. They say the Armenians attacked Azerbaijanis, they destroyed Azerbaijan, etc. Uh, I have referred to his work in my book. And uh, he's simply been paid off very nicely to write something which is not true. Well, we know the examples of uh, Azar propaganda in terms of caviar diplomacy, for instance. Yeah, yeah. They bribe the very authoritative uh, organization representatives to come to their elections and to say something that's not really there. So of course. Uh, the same thing is going on in the academia. That's what well, there's, if you have lots of money, you succeed in politics as well because you spend the money on the politicians. We, our uh, budget in that is nothing also, almost nothing on the uh, political propaganda, very little. And recently there are some uh, moves to increase this budget uh, uh, for writing uh, historical facts actually. Ministry of Foreign Affairs has prob published a number of booklets, various booklets on this matter various matters of whom Khojalu, etc. Uh, but we need more and more of them. How did the Azaris react to your books? Uh, I'll tell you something. They have never reacted to any of books because there is nothing to react. There is no falsehood in there. Their own sources are presented there. How can they contradict their own sources? Are they those who agree with you? Uh, they don't, they not particularly want to agree with me, that, that they cannot dispute the facts. Um, uh, orally, on a number of uh, conferences, some people have come and asked questions. When they've got their answers, like, such as the one that they gave you, to go and read your own history and then tell, uh, find out who's lying, who's uh, saying the truth, and everything is quiet down. Everybody, everybody shuts up. And what should, uh, what should we do to counter more effectively? The we should be bold enough to say the truth. Sometimes we're afraid of the authorities, higher up, bigger countries. What will they say if we contradict them? We say, no, you're right and you're wrong and this is the truth. We should be brave enough to tell the truth and stand by it. And tell it all the time, spread the true word all around. All right, well, thank you very much for a very interesting talk. Thank you.